After 60 of Ova's body is destroyed in the blast, she learns that she won't be able to move for a while and that it will take some time for her entire body to regenerate. Akai discovers that she has two options after wondering if there is anything she can do. She can either use Dragon Heal to heal herself or wait for her body to heal naturally. A declares she will use Dragon Heal only to discover that doing so will permanently transform her into a dragon. She still employs the dragon heel to change into a dragon. Then it becomes clear that Yogiri and the others have made it out alive as well. Yogiri remarks that the blast suggests that this was most likely an extermination bomb. Everything was destroyed by the explosion's heat, and inside were even nanoscale machines. Tomoshika questions how he finds out. After all of this, Roko claims that Yogiri can now break the laws of physics because the second door is open. Eika's other personalities inform her that the Xpion would have destroyed the others, but she believes she must carry out her retaliation in the meantime. After she verifies that this is the case and receives confirmation from her other personas, Aya declares that she will exact her revenge. She will do this by summoning and using her summon dragon warrior skill. When some dragon warriors went in search of the survivors and found Yiri and the others, they were all instantly killed by Yiri. When Aika sees this, she starts to wonder what happened, and her other personalities learn that they have encountered Alpha Omega. They observe that it is in Phase 2, and they question how they are able to identify it. They believe that they must have lost their ability to divert their minds. When Aka asks them what they are talking about after they turn into dragons, they explain that they are next-gen humanity. This project created in case the human race is wiped out by Alpha Omega, and they are reprogrammed to not notice him when he unleashes his power. They order Aka to immediately retreat, but she ignores them and tries to harm them. Yogiri instantly dispatches the dragon when Tomoshika realizes it resembles the one that attacked them on the bus. As we can see, only Aya's personality perished in this attack. The other personalities believe that their continued existence indicates the effectiveness of having multiple autonomous units as a countermeasure, but they are unable to share their findings with anyone and have shut down. Tomoshika deduces that the dragon was actually her when she notices that the dragon warriors resemble Shinaki. After Dion tells them to leave quickly, they attempt to do so but run into Sean. After introducing themselves, Shion and Yogiri fall to the ground. After telling her that he had just killed her ankle, Yogiri asks her to respond to his questions. He kills Shion's hand when she tries to attack him, but Sean doesn't give up. Yogiri informs her that neither his heart nor his instant death ability will be stopped by her, and he adds that he is curious about how to return to his own world. Given that she called them here, she must be familiar with the route. He also says he will continue to kill her gradually until she becomes comfortable speaking. After returning to her hideout via teleportation, Shion is able to regenerate her hand. She is curious as to what transpired there, and Yogiri is still killing off various body parts. Yogiri then begins to kill Shion's body parts as Yoi arrives to check on him. Shion goes back to Yogi because she finds it upsetting to see him in agony. When she begs him to spare her, Yogiri responds that he won't hurt anyone as long as she provides the information he requests. He says she should know that he can kill anyone and that he can kill her no matter where she is. When she sees the others, Yogiri asks Cheyenne how they can get home because she finds his ability to be quite frightening. Yogiri responds by telling her that Dion has visited this world previously and has successfully made his way back when she mentions that she didn't plan for them to return. Yogiri discovers they have no connection to their world and Sean speculates that this might have happened because he was able to keep his connection to the original world. Shion reveals that she broke the connection because it would prevent them from reaching their maximum potential. Yogiri then asks her for the coordinates of their original world after she gets in the way. Tomoshika feels that Zian's lengthy coordinate is excessive when she shows it to him. They need the coordinates and enough energy to return to their world. Yogiri says, but Moka Moko tells her not to worry because she will memorize it. She hands him a Philosopher's Stone after he asks where they can find the energy. She says they can't possibly come back with just one, but if they manage to get more, then perhaps. When Yogiri inquires about her ability to function without it, Sean replies that she has never depended on it. When Yogiri first takes the stone, he understands that the other sages he killed must have also had it. This is accurate, Sean says, but when the sage is killed, the stone becomes useless. Yogiri finds this rather annoying and wonders where the other sages might be, and informs him that she is also clueless about their whereabouts. When Yori follows up with a question about the exit, Dion replies that it's still visible on the map. He questions Yogiri's intentions to leave Shion alive, and Yogiri responds that he only wanted information from her, and that, although he did harbor some resentment toward her, 
he doesn't want to kill her. After that, he and the rest of his group depart, and Sean feels obligated to assist you. She tries to teleport back to her hideout, but something slimy gets in the way and captures her. Sheehan understands that she is the Dark God who was imprisoned in the Underworld when we learn that the slimy thing is a component of Mana. She gives up her leg in an attempt to escape, but it is ineffective and Mana is able to capture her. She says that Sheehan will be a nutrient for her beloved brother and she disables Sean's abilities. She then begins to eat Sheehan, but before she passes away, she begs Mana to remember the name Yogiri because it is he who will end her life. After that, Sean passes away, and in the interim, we witness some aggressors fighting in the capital. Then, Mana Slime begins to cover the capital, and the slime kills one of the aggressors. Rick uses his sword skills to try to slow down the slime because he feels that this is bad, but it is not stopped. When the others escape the underworld and see Eris, he wonders if the wise candidates have broken the seal of the Dark God in the underworld, who is relieved that Lady Mana has at last woken up and David queries what Harari is doing. Before he can act, Yogiri kills him, saying that he sensed that he had murderous intent. The group then noticed that the slime was attempting to breach the town's barrier, and that it had succeeded in doing so. They discovered that Dion was the cause of this, as he had released the Seal of Mana, and informed everyone that this was the Dark God, which had been sealed in the underworld, and Yogiri understood why Dion had wanted to flee earlier. When Mana eventually shows up to talk to Dayon, she asks him to take her to the Yogiri who killed her brother. When Yogiri introduces himself to Mana, she kills him before she can attack him. The slime then becomes immobile, and Dayon says that Yogiri should do what he expected. Carol asks what they should do next, and David replies that they should go to the roof. When they get there, they see a plane, and Yogiri tells David that they can't bring him along because there isn't enough room on the plane. When Dayon begs him to stop acting like a spoilt rich kid, Yogiri responds that it is true that the plane can only accommodate a certain number of passengers. You and Tomoshika should allow the others to use the plane, Mokamako says, adding that they will be fine without... After doing so, Carol and the others board an aircraft to depart. Then, when Tomoshika asks Momoko what they should do, Momoko responds that it's easy and changes Tomoshika's outfit. Yogiri wonders what he should do when she says they can fly with him. According to Momoko, it is possible for this suit to fly. Even though Yogiri is clinging to her, Tomo is embarrassed by this and remarks that it would have been preferable if Yogiri had done this with Carol or Ryoko. Rather, Tomo, Shika, and Yogiri depart the capital after Momoko says she thought this would be more interesting. After a lot has happened, Yogiri asks Tomo, Shika what they should do next. She says she wants to take a break. David has been saying lately that, in this instance, they should go to the nearby town. And Tomoshika is wondering where David has been. He says that it's okay because they don't need to take him with them, leading Yogiri to believe that he must have fled. Carol questions whether the two of them can still follow Tomoshika after he says he doesn't seem interested in returning home. They can, according to Yuri Yogiri, but his main goal is to acquire enough energy to get back home with Tomoshika. Yogiri says he doesn't even know if he will be able to get enough energy to get the two of them home, to which Tomoshika remarks that he shouldn't say this. He therefore cannot afford to assume accountability for others. Rock acknowledges that Carol says it's okay with them. Yogiri says he's tired and asks Tomoshika to carry him after she says they will stay with him for as long as they can. When Ryoko offers to carry him, he accepts, and Riley's carriage arrives. When Riley exits the carriage, she introduces herself and asks Yogiri to marry her. Yogiri rejects her right away, but he later realizes that she is carrying Thad Dizia and Euphemia, and he is happy to see them together again. After giving Yogiri her Philosopher's Stone, Riley asks him to consider her request and then follow through. The Divine King is in shock that Yogi was able to defeat such a monster. She believes he could pose a threat to them, and that she cannot leave such a monster on her own. In other places, an aggressor carries her root away with him, and Dian is constantly escaping Yogiri because he fears causing harm to himself. Next, we witness Yogi's group riding in a Risley's carriage while Yogiri is perched on Tomo's lap. He recalls that Asaka advised him to exercise his own judgment when using his powers and to exercise caution when allowing himself to be influenced by the ideas and opinions of those who are no longer alive. Yogiri sleeps soundly on Raleigh's lap, and she is envious of Tomoshika. Thank you for watching the entire series. If you liked it, please like and share the video. You can also turn on the notification bell and hit the subscribe button to receive updates when new content is posted. Updates 